Home Assistant's August release is here, which of course is 2024.8. And this month we have another great release, including new dashboard badges, more data table sorting, local AI control, and the removal of services. All right, all right, don't panic. Services aren't actually getting removed, but rather they are being renamed instead to actions. Now, I know that is gonna set some of you off that have been using Home Assistant for years and years, but as one of those users myself, I do think this is a really welcome change and one that makes so much more sense to most people than using the word service calls does, unless you are a developer, of course. Now, it's worth saying that this change doesn't mean you're gonna have to go in and fix all of your automations and scripts or anything like that. It's just purely a term change to make sure that things are easier for beginners to understand. The only difference is that if you write your automations in YAML, you should start using the action key instead of the service key. The service key will still work for now, but I'm guessing that eventually this will be deprecated, so best to get into the habit of using the action key now instead. All of your existing automations and scripts are gonna be automatically converted to using the new action key, so no need to worry there. And again, nothing is going to break or stop working. I personally do like this change and I think it is one that makes so much sense. Next up, the push for dashboard revamps this year has added yet another new feature in this release, which is called badges. If you've used mushroom or minimalist cards in the past, then you will know these as chips and they are basically little icons that show up at the top of your dashboard for quick glance information or quick toggle controls. Kind of similar to the person badges that you used to get at the top of the default dashboard back in the day, but more expandable. If you edit your dashboard when it's in sections view, you will see that there is now a plus button near the top of the page, which will let you add an entity badge. You can then select an entity as normal and change any of the options that you need, including the tap action or the appearance. A great way to show who's home, how many lights are on, or an action to close all of the blinds, for example. Another quality of life improvement for the UI in this release is that tables now have a new field to show and sort by created or modified by timestamps, including on pages like the device page or the entity page, so that you can now find when a device was added or when it was last changed, for example. Two releases ago in 2024.6, we got a big new feature that allowed Home Assistant to be controlled by OpenAI and Google AI integrations. Basically, Home Assistant would only let you talk to these AI integrations, but you couldn't actually control any devices until 2024.6 added that functionality. This release expands on that even further by now letting you control Home Assistant with Olama, which is a local AI integration that you can run on your own hardware, assuming you have something powerful enough to run it. Home Assistant does point out that Olama does not score as well in a benchmark that the team created in comparison to OpenAI and Google. However, it's certainly worth giving it a go if you are interested and hopefully it should get better over time. It's always great to have a local option too. Matter gets improvements once again in this release too, since it can now offer updates for Matter devices just like Zigbee does, assuming the manufacturer offers updates publicly. Home Assistant does say that there aren't many manufacturers that offer updates just now, but hopefully we can give some gentle persuasion to other manufacturers to encourage them to offer this as it's a really great feature. Matter also gets an improvement for event entities in this release too, where event entities can now provide more event types for things like a single button press, a double or a triple button press. Finally, there is also improvements to the select entities inside of Home Assistant for selecting modes for Matter devices on, for example, a vacuum where you may have different modes for the suction power. KNX users can also rejoice with this release as there is a new UI which lets you manage KNX devices directly from inside of the Home Assistant UI with what looks like a nice dedicated panel in the sidebar to configure devices and their behavior and settings. Unfortunately, I don't have any KNX devices yet to be able to show you this, but it does look like a really nice addition if you are a KNX user. On top of this new feature, KNX has also received improvements to add more data point types for things like color, dimming, 
time and HVAC modes, which can be used in triggers and actions, with more coming later down the road. Finally, for the big stuff, you know how in every one of these videos, near the end, I mentioned that some integrations have now been converted from setting up in YAML to the UI? That happens in pretty much every release, but it's a slow process given the sheer number of devices and integrations that there are in Home Assistant, but the team recognises that some integrations that are set up in YAML are only visible in YAML 2, where the UI isn't aware that an integration even exists. So in this release, there has been improvements made so that even if an integration is still set up in YAML, it will at least let you know of its existence inside of the UI so as not to confuse users about where that device or integration is. So now all devices and integrations will at least show up in the UI regardless of how they were initially set up. This includes a bunch of helpers that are set up in YAML, which will now show up in the UI too. As for the little things this month, firstly, Assist gets two new functions. One that now lets you ask the current date and time, and another lets you set timers from the mobile app. The repairs feature, which warns you of issues, can now warn you if a script isn't working properly, and also it will warn you if you remove an integration that's referenced somewhere like in an automation, for example. You can now also group buttons together along with notification entities. You can now add button, image, select and switch templates right from inside of the UI. And WLED now supports color changing temperature LED strips from inside of Home Assistant. Nice. In terms of new integrations this month, there is a massive 10 new integrations that have been added in this release, including the Iron OS one, which lets you monitor your soldering iron from inside of Home Assistant. I don't know why you would need to use that, but needless to say, I want it. And there's also been seven new integrations that are available to set up in the UI instead of via YAML. As for breaking changes or backwards incompatible changes this month, not a small list, but not a massive list either. Nothing major jumping out except there is a breaking change for the recorder database, which is worth taking a look at but it only applies to you if you are using MySQL or Postgres as your database type. If you're using the default database, then it does not apply to you. But other than that, nothing major, but do make sure to have a read for yourself to make sure nothing else is applicable to your setup. And that's about it for this release. Some nice quality of life improvements this month and pretty cool to see more dashboard improvements continue to be adding this year, which we all love to see. Do let me know your favourite new feature down in the comments, as always. That KNX one is pretty cool too. I definitely need to check out some KNX devices soon, I reckon. Maybe this is the push that I finally needed. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, as always. Please drop this video a like and get subscribed, and I will see you in the next video.